Let's come. To seven. What if the Traveler is also unavailable? What am I supposed to do? Well, that's your problem. It was your choice to get into this mess. Oh, but fortunately for you, it appears your savior has just arrived. Hmm? Ah, Traveler. Great, you made it. Huh. <laughs> well, it's not like you were ever really busy to begin with. Ugh, Songo! Compared to the Traveler, you're the one who has too much free time. No, I'm very busy. I'm busy standing here. I have to stand here all day. Even if it's a commission you're unwilling to take, your excuse is just pathetic. Yes, that's why I've asked you to come over. Allow me to explain. A key member of the Tenryo Commission has recently gone missing. No one has seen them, and their whereabouts are currently unknown. The Tenryo Commission has entrusted us to find this person discreetly, because it would be a hassle for them to look for this person openly for a variety of reasons. Their name is... Kujosara. That's right, the General has gone missing. <sighs> if the General was really missing, the Tenryo Commission would have flipped Inazuma on its head by now. And do you think they would only commission us for a case like that? Please ignore Sango's nonsense, Traveler. In fact, the missing person's name is Shikanoin Heizo. He works as a special detective at the police station. Although his rank is merely a doshin, he is quite competent and held in high regard by the police station. Uh, do they think he's more competent than me? <sighs> We get that you don't want to help, Songo, but could you at least try not to make things more difficult here? Sorry, Traveler. Even though I accepted the commission, as you can see, Songo's less than thrilled to be involved in this case. Nope. Not even close. If you really want to know why, it's because I absolutely refuse to deal with that brat's nonsense. The only news that could make me happier than Shikanoin has gone missing would be Shikanoin has been missing for a hundred years! <clears throat> Needless to say, Sango and Heizo have a bit of a history. Um, ah, uh, uh, well, it's a little more serious than that. According to Sango, Heizo was an obstacle in her path to the Temple of Truth. Like a yappy dog that was constantly in the way. <sighs> Even though Heizo has a unique personality, he's actually a nice guy. Really, I've learned a lot from him. So I can't just ignore this case, even if Songo doesn't approve. At the very least, I could entrust the commission to someone capable and trustworthy, like you, Traveler. Huh? No, no, it's not like that. Listen, I'll pay the entire amount originally promised by the Tenryo Commission, and I'll even personally throw in some additional funds. I'm really hoping you can take this commission, Traveler. If Heizo truly is in danger, I know he'll be safer with you by his side. Great. We've learned that Heizo had expressed interest in Watatsumi Island before he disappeared. During the war, he apparently carried out some mission on Watatsumi Island, and once the war ended, he made frequent visits to the island. I heard you have a good standing with Sangonomiya. I think it might be a good idea to use that as a starting point for your investigation. Well, that's about all I have to tell you. Oh, please take this commission letter from the police station. If you find Heizo, return there and report back to them.
Oh, it's you. The captain of Swordfish 2? My name is Shibata. I'm in charge of the watch here. May I inquire as to what the captain needs? So his name is Shikano Inhezo, huh? Yes, I'm familiar with the detective. He used to stroll around the area. Her Excellency had assigned me to keep a close eye on him at the time, fearing that he would do something unpleasant, but I eventually realized that he acted more like he was on a trip or something. Come to think of it, I believe he was recently spotted in the area east of the Sanganamiya Shrine. Please feel free to go there and take a look for yourself. you guys I'm nothing but a poor tourist with empty pockets please you can just let me go well well look who it is I was wondering who could be valiant enough to wipe the floor with these guys so easily. Turns out it was the distinguished traveler. Really, I can't thank you enough. Of course I was aware of you long before you arrived in Inazuma. Though the Sakoku Decree managed to keep the country locked up, it wasn't able to stop the incredible stories about you. Every day, all of those little stories would come scurrying over to my desk, like files with little feet. I was actually thinking about going to meet you, once I wrapped up the business at hand. Who would have guessed that you'd show up first? <laughs> ah, I got so excited, I nearly forgot to introduce myself. Ahem. The name's Shikanoin Heizo, Special Detective of the Tenryo Commission. It's a pleasure to meet you, Traveler. I wish you all the best on your journey through Tevat, by the way. Huh. I guess that means I've taken over as the main character in your story today. I've always heard that you take commissions from all kinds of people, helping everyone out with everything you can imagine. So now it's my turn to take your help, huh? <laughs> Don't mind if I do. That was already obvious to me. It's no coincidence that you've arrived here. Because that would be the stuff of an epic novel. The two protagonists of the story both travel to Watatsumi Island by chance and cross paths as if by fate. The traveler from afar heroically rescues the weak and defenseless detective from the clutches of the ruthless Nobushi. <sighs> traveler, you are so dreamy. Unfortunately, though, I don't believe in coincidences. So, guessing you came to me on the police station's commission, didn't you? I'm a detective. <laughs> Can you guess what gave it away? <laughs> Sounds like you already have some ideas about the work of a detective. Let me ask you this. What's that your little sidekick is holding? If I'm not mistaken, it's a commission letter from the police station. Oh, what? Uh, Paimon's just here to take a look! And hey, who are you calling a little sidekick? Paimon was worried he might be in danger, so Paimon came to help! Too staring at Paimon. Is Paimon not supposed to be here? 
Yeah, I'm also just taking a look. Hmm. He can look, but you can't. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't be like that. After all, this is the first time I've seen a voice. I must admit, I'm most intrigued. Huh? Voice? What are you talking about? A vision is an external magical focus, right? Well, similarly, a voice is an external voice box. I've heard that the Traveler isn't very talkative, but given how chatty you are, you must be his voice, right? That sounds awful! Paimon's not somebody's voice! Paimon's emergency food! Uh, uh, no! Uh, uh, wait! Oh, Paimon's so upset she can't think straight! Paimon is Paimon! How dare you give Paimon such a terrible nickname! We came here to rescue you, but you actually opened the cage yourself. You were only pretending to be captured by the Nobushi, weren't you? Mm, pretty suspicious if you ask Paimon. Come out with it, mister. What kind of schemes are you up to? Sheesh. For someone who says they don't want to be a voice, you sure do talk a lot. <laughs> well, let me think for a moment. Yes, all this started a long time ago, during the war. Kujo Takayuki, who was head of the Tenryo Commission at the time, had secretly asked me to investigate the military capabilities of Sanganamiya. But I had already grown tired of the guy for a while, <laughs> so I simply treated the trip as a paid vacation. I had heard that Watatsumi Island is really beautiful. As for the mission, I thought I'd just come up with some random excuses or whatever when I reported back. But guess what? The first night I arrived on Watatsumi Island, I had a dream. The dream contained only one message, an echo resounding from the depths of the earth that kept ringing in my ears, saying... Something vital is missing on this island. Isn't that bizarre? Something vital has gone missing on this island. Has something evaporated into thin air? Hmm... What could it be? Paimon bets it must be something delicious. You know, because the soil of Watatsumi Island can't grow crops. There's a shortage of food here. Oh. Food, huh? Hmm. How about you, Traveler? What do you think is missing? You mean the Great Serpent? Well, that's an interesting answer. But the Electro Archon hasn't abandoned this place. Interestingly, I didn't have the same dream again after I left this place. So I became even more intrigued. Was this really just some random dream? Some people believe that dreams represent the Divine's helping hand. Which, I suppose, is understandable. However, if you ask me, dreams have nothing to do with the gods. Instead... They are flashes of intuition. It was my intuition telling me that there was something important about this island that... Poof! Suddenly vanished. So I decided to accept this little commission from my intuition and investigate to see if I could come up with any compelling findings. Unfortunately, the investigation has had little progress up to this point. Who knows? I felt there was something peculiar about them, so I pretended to get captured to see if there were any leads that would surface. And that's when you showed up. Nah, don't worry about it. These guys were just a bunch of small fries. Besides, your arrival is much more important to me. I have a feeling you can help me find the answer to my dream. So how would you like to partner up on this one? 
We can work together to solve the mystery. Yes, of course, I understand. But let me ask one more question. Did the police station say they are looking for me because of something important? Well, then it's probably nothing major. Most likely they're short on staff or something petty like that, and they happen to remember their model employee. So since we're already here, why don't we just solve this puzzle together? Once everything is settled, I'll gladly accompany you back to the police station, or anywhere else you'd like to go. What do you think? <laughs> it's a deal then, partner. So, let's get started, shall we? First, we can search the camp for clues. Isn't this crystal mirror? Oh, what's the shiny thing? Oh, it's a Sango Pearl! So, have you found anything? Yes, I've found pretty much the same. And there really are a lot. Aren't these all super expensive? Oh, these must be the valuable things that went missing from the island! That's it! The Nabushi must have stolen them all! <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far. The Nabushi would be very hard-pressed to find many opportunities to get their hands on commodities like these. Huh? What do you mean? Did the Nabushi gather all this themselves? No, that's unlikely. Crystal marrow is a rare material for crafting weapons, and Sango pearls are an even more precious commodity. Here's what I think. Due to Watatsumi's poor soil, the island's economy is quite fragile and heavily reliant on the trade of these special resources. So, it's absolutely vital that they keep them under lock and key and well out of the Nobushi's reach. Which means, they got lucky with a huge batch like this, my guess is they ambushed a caravan. <laughs> if we go ask around the Sanganamiya Shrine, we can find out if there have been any recent instances of caravans being plundered. Perfect. I knew you'd be a huge help. <laughs> well, duh! The Traveler is Paimon's companion, after all. Captain, I see you found the detective. <sighs> Watatsumi Island sure is a beautiful place. I don't think I could ever leave. <laughs> you can stay as long as you like, granted you don't cause any trouble, that is. Her Excellency has stated that all friendly visitors are welcome. Incidents of stolen goods? Not that I'm aware of. Her Excellency has recently launched several measures to boost the economy, including the development of trade routes and establishing our own caravans. Troops have also been deployed to protect them, so it is only reasonable to assume that the current trade routes are already very safe. Any looting or theft would be practically unthinkable. That's strange. Then where did the Nobushi get those goods from? Huh? You mean you found goods of unknown origin? Yep, and it's all Sango Pearls and Crystal Marrow, so we know it's local. Could there have really been a theft that hasn't been reported? That shouldn't be the case. <sighs> well, perhaps you could go ask Todoroki. He's responsible for the caravans and is usually in the village at night preparing the goods. If something has happened, he should know about it. Great, thank you for all the info. Let's go. Hey, Traveler! It's been a while. I miss you. Uh, why didn't you inform me that you'd be coming over today? Ah, uh, General Goro. You're dismissed, Shibata. You may go about your other duties while I catch up with the Traveler. Yes, General Goro. I overheard you discussing a case of stolen goods. Is that right? That's right! 
We found a lot of Watatsumi's valuable products in an Ibushi camp. I see. So you've come to ask if we know of any relevant cases. Well, I'm ashamed to say that, yes, the caravans have been plundered. And not just once, I'm afraid. We had already dispatched additional forces to protect the caravans, yet the crooks still managed to get away with the goods. And you're concerned that if this kind of news were to get out, it would undermine the confidence of other caravans. So you didn't make it public, and instead kept the news to only a select few. Ah, huh, that's correct. I never expected you to be so concerned about Watatsumi's affairs, Detective Heizo. <laughs> Just a force of habit, really. As a detective, I notice these kinds of things. Oh, so you two already know each other? Actually, I've only heard of Detective Hazo from the soldiers' reports. We've never met in person. Ah, uh, darn it. You're right. Now that you mention it, I've been on Watatsumi Island all this time and still haven't properly introduced myself. Man alive, please forgive me. It's a pleasure to meet you, General Goro. I'm Shikanoin Heizo of the Tenryo Commission. Yes, it's a pleasure to meet you too. I'd like to express my gratitude to you for stepping in and helping recover those goods. Ah, don't mention it. You never know what you'll find when you're out for a stroll. But, if the source of the problem is not addressed, I'm afraid this sort of situation will continue cropping up for you. Yes, of course. Not only have we reassured the affected caravans, but we also dispatched personnel to investigate the culprits. The reports indicated that the stolen goods were being delivered to a merchant of the International Trade Association named Godot. It all seems pretty unusual. We suspect that there are bigger players behind Godot, and that their target is none other than Watatsumi Island's valuable resources. But unfortunately, it would be difficult for us to investigate further, given that... Given that, Rito, the island where the International Trade Association is located is not part of your territory, yes. They have cleverly picked their base of operations. I can see you catch on quickly, Detective Hazo. <laughs> it's my guess that you're telling us this because you're going to ask us to assist you in finding who's behind all this, right? <laughs> you're always thinking one step ahead. Yes, those were exactly my intentions. And of course, we will prepare a generous reward for you. The recent end of the war, trade and commerce have now become an important component of Watatsumi Island's development. Ensuring safety of the trade routes is critical, and we can't afford any further incidents. So, will you please help Watatsumi Island, Detective Heizo? I'm willing to assist, but it all depends on what he wishes. Great! With both Detective Hazo and the Traveler on the case, I'm sure it'll be solved in no time. The situation is now in your capable hands. I look forward to hearing your report when you get back. All right, we'll take care of it. Traveler, let's go discuss where to head from here. Very perceptive. Seems even Paimon has her moments. Let me ask you, do you believe in intuition? Huh? Intuition? Where are you going with this? My intuition tells me that General Goro is lying. What? How could you say that? Uh, although he did seem a little on the serious side today, but... Good people can be deceptive, too. After all, everyone has their secrets. Well, in my opinion, the timing of his appearance was a little too coincidental. Sanganamiya's soldiers have been keeping an eye on me for the entire time I've been on Watatsumi Island, yet I had never seen General Goro even once. But today he came out and met with us, and even commissioned us to investigate a case. Maybe that's because the Traveler is here today, and Goro thinks he's more capable. Really? 
Huh. Then that makes things even more peculiar. If there are powerful players behind this case, and he needs to draw upon external support, then he should have taken action sooner rather than wait until today. A more plausible explanation is that the items we discovered are linked with some unspeakable secret, and he had to intervene to prevent us from digging any deeper. Then he put up a smokescreen to mislead us. I surmise that investigating the merchant Godot on retail will yield no results. Whoa! Are you serious? Uh, but this is all just a hunch you have, right? Actually, there is another key factor behind my reasoning, though you may not believe me. I sense something... special about Goro. Something special? Yes. Whatever is missing on this island, I sense it in him. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold it right there! Are you saying Goro's a thief? As in he took something valuable? It's not that simple. I can't fully explain it. It's just my... Uh, intuition. Sure. I trust your judgment, but perhaps you're overlooking someone else, the true leader here. It's simple. We should just investigate whatever it is they're trying to hide from us. And what were we planning to do just before Goro showed up? Um... Oh, we were going to talk to the leader of the caravans! Uh, yeah! Someone named Todoroki! Bingo! There's no time to lose. Let's go talk to this Todoroki. Todoroki, the shipment has arrived and is ready for inspection. Good, let's go. Hey, it's Todoroki! Shh, keep quiet. Let's follow him and see where he leads us. Your intel was spot on. When we arrived, the Nobushi were all still asleep. <laughs> we captured them all, and the goods were retrieved and brought back here. I'll take a look. Hmm. Everything seems in order. Good work. It's nothing. Thanks to the efforts of your caravan, the price of grain in the village has decreased. That's right. And who would have thought that the injuries we sustained during the war would have such a lingering effect on our bodies? But thankfully, you also brought back some life-saving medicine. Things are improving, thanks to the help from those up top. Oh, by the way, what is the state of the village's inventory? Make sure that it's confirmed tonight. I have to leave tomorrow morning after I go to the Sanganomiya Shrine and get instructions from General Goro. Don't worry. We've already prepared the list. Just follow us. Huh? The soldiers from Sanganomiya seized the Nabushi stolen goods? But didn't Goro say all the stolen goods were headed to the International Trade Association? And Todoroki said he'll get instructions from Goro tomorrow. Interesting. It appears these seized goods were never stolen. There's something else behind all this. Glaze lilies? What are 
are these doing here? Shouldn't it be Crystal Marrow or something? This box is packed so tight! It looks like it could burst! Let's see what's inside! Huh? What are all these plants and flowers? Oh, there's a small mill here! Jinxian? Paimon was expecting to find Sango Pearls. So, did you find anything? Wow! Look at all the Jinxian! And Glaze Lilies, too! There are also tons of other plants and flowers Paimon doesn't know here. Weird. These are valuable raw ingredients for producing medicine. If these few crates were to be imported from Rito, the price would be jaw-dropping. On top of that, these items seem to lack a tax clearance certificate, meaning that they were most likely smuggled. Yes, very interesting. Now, where did the Nobushi get these goods? How about you? Did you find anything else? Foreign Trade Association? I've never heard of such an organization in Rito. And if it's regarding foreign trade, then smuggling is an even more likely possibility. All right. In which case, I have a rough hypothesis. First, we... Huh? Who goes there? Oh no! We've been spotted! Huh? Wait, Captain? Is that you? Oh! So it's you, Captain. You had me worried there. We almost mistook you for bandits. <laughs> Captain, do you remember us? During the war, I was in the field hospital with Masashi. Tepe brought you to see us and helped find medicine for us. Hey, come on now. The Captain wouldn't forget. I gotta tell you, Captain. We all miss you. We haven't seen you ever since the end of the war. When we heard that you were coming here, we just assumed you were only going to see General Goro and Her Excellency. The guys are all really hoping to see you. We're fine. You don't have to worry about us, Captain. No, you're not fine. Captain, you may not be aware, but Masashi previously fainted on the front lines. The doctor thought that it might be a neurological condition caused by overstimulated emotions. It's pretty serious. According to the doctor, if it hadn't been for the medication he's been taking, he would have developed dementia. And that was assuming the best case scenario. You're one to talk. Don't forget why I fainted in the first place. It's because I heard that you got yourself killed by an arrow. I couldn't handle all the emotion. Later, I found out that he'd been shot in the buttocks and it was only a mild injury. I had an emotional breakdown for nothing. What do you mean for nothing? I got shot not by one, but two arrows in a row. The first arrow was to the left cheek, and the second arrow was also to the left. And because the arrows were poisonous, the wound still hasn't completely healed yet. I have to apply ointment every day, and I'm constantly worried it might reopen while I sleep. Look on the bright side. At least we're still alive. Yeah. I suppose you're right. But enough about us. What brings you here, Captain? Oh, these goods are all seized from the hands of Nobushi and treasure hoarders. Todoroki was the one who provided us with the intel. He mentioned there were bandits here and there, so we went and took care of them while also confiscating the goods. By the way, Captain, you still haven't met Todoroki, have you? He's the one we're working for now. Her Excellency recently announced plans to stimulate the economy and created the caravans, with Todoroki at the helm. Yeah, he's proven to be quite capable. Even though he was just a farmer before, he's now successfully running the caravans. And his two sons were also our brothers-in-arms. Both received a special medal of honor from General Goro, which is quite remarkable, don't you think? So, as injured veterans, we've been reassigned to Todoroki. He's the one who gives us orders and pays our salaries now. 
What do they call that again? It's called changing careers, dummy. Ah, uh, right. Changing careers. Anyway, I think the whole caravan thing is wonderful. Our region wasn't very prosperous to begin with, and the land can't grow any crops. We have to pay a hefty price just to get basic food from outside. I can't even imagine trying to maintain and feed an army like we did during the war. I see. I think I understand the general situation now. May I ask where the apprehended criminals are? Oh, uh, and you are? Ah, I see. The captain's friend. It should be okay to tell you then. We apprehended all the culprits and escorted them to a temporary location not far from here. Unfortunately, Masashi and I have other duties tonight and won't be able to take you there. Why don't you wait for a moment and I'll find someone else to show you the way. I'm pretty sure I've already got a grasp on what's going on. All I need now is to confirm it with the apprehended bandits. Let's go. Are you still a little confused? <laughs> Let me help connect the dots. This whole thing was actually quite similar to a case I once worked on previously. It was a case involving the trade of prohibited items, and they employed an old trick to execute the deal. The culprit would first go strolling down the street until they knocked over a pedestrian on purpose, using the opportunity to slip the prohibited goods into the unknowing pedestrian's pocket. Once the intended res- <laughs> Sir, please forgive us, sir. We are nothing more than petty thieves. <laughs> sir, what do I look like, a commissioner? Does my friend here look like a commissioner to you? Uh, uh, officer! Officer! First, I'm gonna need to ask you a few questions. Uh, sure! G go ahead, H ask anything. The soldiers discovered many valuable goods in your camp. The goods don't appear to be from around here, so the question is, where did they come from? Oh, the goods? Uh, right, we picked them up at the beach. You picked them up? Uh, well, no, we, uh, actually stole them. Be honest now. Tell me the whole story. Yes, sir. I, I, I mean, officer. <laughs> uh, we took those goods from a small merchant ship just off the beach, but we didn't exactly steal them. Uh, you see, the ship's guards all took off running the moment they saw us. They abandoned the goods, and we simply came and picked them up. But next thing we know, a group of soldiers arrives, and we're all apprehended. <laughs> Talk about bad luck. We didn't even have a chance to stash away the goods before we got caught. You say that the merchant ship's guards fled without putting up a fight. <laughs> you expect me to believe that? You just assumed they were scared witless and didn't have the guts to fight. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not bragging or anything, but <laughs> our boss is pretty intimidating. With his massive muscle and strength, he can scare anyone. <laughs> you really expect us to believe all this? No, 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 you gotta believe me. Just the other day, we scared off an entire squad of soldiers. When they noticed us, they went running and dropped their goods. <laughs> I, I, I swear! I still remember seeing tons of Sango pearls and crystal marrow in that load. All oh, nice and shiny, too. Ooh, it was amazing. Unfortunately, a bunch of pirates came later and snatched those goods. It just happened that our boss had diarrhea that day and couldn't hold off the pirates. Ah, <sighs> this luck of ours. Wait a tick? Pirates? Yep, no doubt about it. They came on a massive ship, and their captain was a pretty lady with an eye patch. <laughs> we had no idea how powerful she was. It was like, boom, boom, thud! Only took three hits before she knocked out the boss. <gasps> a pretty lady with an eye patch? Oh, does this description remind you of someone, Paimon? Uh, <laughs> no! <laughs> Doesn't remind Paimon of anyone. 
Okay. And how about you? <laughs> really? Okay, I'll take that as a no, then. It appears that the situation is just as I suspected. Todoroki is striking a shady deal with a group of pirates, while General Goro appears to be assisting with the cover-up. What? How could that be? Todoroki said that he'd be going to Sanganomiya early tomorrow morning to get Goro's instructions before the caravan leaves. Now is the time to address any doubts you may have. Tomorrow morning will be our moment to confront them. Hopefully, my final question will be answered then as well. The question of what important thing this island is missing. I can feel some connection to the question in Goro, Todoroki, and even Takuda and Masashi. Hopefully, we'll finally have an answer tomorrow. <sighs> Let's get some rest. I'll see you at Sanganamiya tomorrow morning. Hello, Todoroki. I'm Shikanoin Heizo, Special Detective of the Tenryo Commission. I believe you've been manipulating large-scale illegal trades for some time now. Mind if we talk about that for a bit? <laughs> you can't just go around spewing such nonsense, young man. And what if I'm not talking nonsense? Ridiculous. I don't have time to listen to this. Get out of here, you little brat! <laughs> I know I'm on the younger side compared to you, Todoroki, so I'm sure you must have heard the old saying. Off the scale, some goods only weigh a couple pounds, but on the scale, they weigh more than a thousand. So the question is, do you want to put your goods on the scale or not? What are you trying to say? <laughs> well, nothing. All I want to hear is you personally confirming what we already know to be the truth. Masashi! Tokura! Arrest these people! Huh? Todoroki? What's wrong? Who dares to cause trouble at Sangonomiya Shrine? Huh? Wait, it's... Captain? What are you doing? These crooks are trying to pry into the secrets of Watatsumi! We mustn't let them go! But, uh, no. There must be some kind of misunderstanding. Todoroki, this is the captain of Swordfish 2, one of our, our own. <laughs> it doesn't matter who they are. Remember what General Goro told you? The long-term goal of Watatsumi is to revive its trade and commerce. And since you have been assigned to work with me, it's my orders that count around here. I don't care if they were your captain. Would you dare disobey orders? I... Uh... <sighs> what do we do? Well, what are you waiting for? All right, I see how it is. If you two won't do it, I will. I really hoped it wouldn't come to this. But... Here we go. Wait! Everyone, stand down! General Goro! You're here! My apologies, Traveler, Detective Hazo. I wasn't telling you the truth. Todoroki, the Traveler here is the hero who saved Watatsumi Island. Without him, Watatsumi Island would never have found the peace it has today. We mustn't raise our weapons against him. How could you be so naive, General Goro? If we let them go free, then who's to say the Shogunate won't come after us tomorrow? If the Shogunate decides to investigate, we won't be able to hide the truth. I wouldn't allow them to take you, Todoroki. Ah, let's not kid ourselves. 
If going to jail could solve the problem, I would go and turn myself into the Tenryo Commission right now. The question is, what are we going to do with the goods? Will you be able to keep them? Not to mention the chance of astronomical fines. Can you afford that? Goro, we both know that Watatsumi Island is a barren land. Plant a hundred radishes here and maybe only three would grow. And those three combined would still be smaller than just one carrot imported from elsewhere. You can't grow food or medicinal herbs here. And if we buy them from Rito, we pay exorbitant taxes. My eldest son died fighting on the battlefield. But do you know how my second son died? He died because there was no medicine to treat him. You awarded both of them medals of honor. But did that save their lives? Can medals heal Tokuda and Masashi's wounds? No. It was the medicine that I got that saved their lives. If we detain them today, the Shogunate will never know what we've done. Besides, we're only a few months away now. We will set them free once the new bill is passed in just a few months, and everything will be okay. None of what happened here will be mentioned again, and life on Watatsumi Island will continue to improve. I understand, Todoroki, but they won't... I, I can trust the Traveler won't, but the detective here is a Tenryo commission officer. Uh, forget it. You're the general. I'm just a radish farmer. Ah. It's a new commodity tax bill currently being drafted by the Kanjo Commission. The bill exempts taxes on goods that are in short supply on Watatsumi Island. Once the bill's introduced, we'll be able to buy commodities that we need from regular marketplaces. Oh, t I see. Man alive. I wish I had known sooner. <laughs> In that case, how about we put your fears at ease and I'll stick around here a little longer. You know, until the bill is introduced. Huh? Oh, uh, D Detective Hazo, are you saying that... You mean you're willing to stay here, young man? Come on, you two. What's with the strange looks? You've been keeping me under close surveillance, haven't you? Surely you must have noticed that aside from being a detective, I'm also an ordinary tourist who likes to enjoy good scenery. I believe that after the new commodity bill is passed, there will be more and more traffic between the two sides, and more and more people will be coming to visit Watatsumi Island. I have to take the opportunity now and enjoy this place while I still have it all to myself. Before long, tourists will start pouring in. Ha! Huh. Thank you, Detective Heizo. On behalf of the people of Watatsumi. My pleasure. But one good turn deserves another, does it not? Oh, you mean there's something you wish to request? I suppose you could say I'm from the Shogunate, but the traveler next to me isn't. As far as I know, he's planning to visit other nations soon, and it is unclear if he will return to Narukami Island or not. Therefore, there's no need to limit his freedom, right? I'm sure no one else will hear of what happened today. Am I right, Traveler? Well, it's settled then. He will always be an important partner to Watatsumi, and I would never dream of limiting his freedom. So please, don't worry, Detective Hazo. I'll hold you to that. But if I ever find out you've lied to me again, there's a chance I'll lose my cool. I'm... Sorry for not telling you the truth earlier. It's a serious matter, and I didn't want outside parties to become involved. But today, I realized my poor judgment. How could I possibly hide anything from Detective Hazo and the Traveler? <laughs> I'm glad you understand now. But, in all honesty, I'm the one who should be thanking you. It's because of you that I was finally able to reach an answer. After all, nothing makes a detective happier than putting a case to rest. Ah, I understand now. You really are an interesting person, Detective Hazo. <laughs> no, I'm afraid you don't quite get what I mean. Uh, I I'm sorry? Wait, wait! Paimon gets this one! It's the answer to your question, right? 
The one about the thing you sensed coming from Goro and the others. Now you figured it out! What? Uh, the thing you sensed coming from me? But I always have excellent personal hygiene. <laughs> no, not like that. <laughs> hey, uh, Traveler, could I talk to you for a moment? Besides, I haven't had a chance to thank you yet. There you are. Uh, come here. Look, look. It's beautiful, isn't it? Watatsumi Island. It's remarkable how such a barren land can give life to such wonderful and stunning scenery. To be honest, I am grateful to you for this trip. Before you arrived, I was running around like a headless chicken. <laughs> Even if I happened to find out what was going on here, I wouldn't have been able to uncover any concrete information without you present. I'm just sorry that I promised I'd accompany you back. It appears that I won't be able to do so for the time being. So please, uh, cover for me in the meantime, okay? <laughs> eh, it's all in the past now. Let's just chalk it up as an intriguing experience I had on my trip here. Besides, that's not what I wanted to investigate anyway. Yes. Everyone you led me to and everything they said brought me closer to the answer. And now I finally get it. Watatsumi Island is an ancient land where the soil is poor and many crops do not grow because it's lacking a certain thing. But what the inhabitants of this land do have is bravery. They were courageous enough to stand up and resist the gods and accomplish what they knew could not be done. This is yet another instance in which that certain thing shines. That missing element, that certain thing, is what I sensed present in Goro, Todoroki, Tokuda, and Masashi. Which is... the true vitality of this land. I guess I was mistaken when I declared that something was missing. That something from this island had evaporated into thin air. Because even something that evaporates is not gone. It's still there, just in a different state of being. When water is heated by fire, it evaporates and eventually finds its place in the sky. Similarly, when the land was harmed, its vitality evaporated and eventually found its place among the inhabitants. This is the final answer I've been searching for. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> thanks again. You know, even though we just met, I wish you could be my partner all the time. <laughs> Call me Grady, I guess. But, of course, I know that's impossible. You have your own journey to complete. So I'll just keep doing what I can, hopefully keeping my memories from evaporating safe and sound in my mind. That way, I'll always be able to remember these beautiful things. The beauty of Watatsumi Island, the people who are full of life and vitality. And you two, who were by my side. Ah, uh, what a sterling example of dedication. In that case, I'll accompany you back to the police station first. We can discuss the issue of Watatsumi Island later.
Oh, look who showed up. Hey, Zo, you're finally back. Listen, if you took any longer to come back, everyone at the police station would be toast. You say that every time I come back, Uesugi. However, something does feel a little unusual about the police station this time. Come on, would I ever lie to you? Madam Kujo Sara is here, and she's on the warpath. So be on the lookout. <laughs> What's that lady doing here? Doshin Shikanoin. I see you've finally returned. Please, enlighten us. What have you been doing recently? Uh, okay. I was just out investigating a case. Don't give me that. I checked the records here. You didn't take any cases. Uh, actually, it's a case of personal relevance to me. These two can attest to that. Hmm? Traveler? Paimon, what are you two doing here? We're the ones who brought Hazel back! Brought him back? Can someone please explain? Uh, well, Madam Kujosara, because we couldn't locate Doshin Shikanoin, we commissioned Detective Ryuji from the detective agency. Shortly after, Ryuji returned to tell us, uh, that he had given the commission to the Traveler, <clears throat> and then... Ugh, it used to be that the Tenryo Commission assisted others with disappearances, but it seems these days others are now assisting us. You've done it this time, Shikanoin. I think I've really seen it all. I mean, is it really so unusual for officers and citizens to assist one another? Yeah! It was kind of weird, but it was definitely an investigation. He even pretended to be captured by Nabushi and treasure hoarders. Oh? Is that so? Well, since you are testifying for him, I suppose I won't ask any more questions. But, since you're here, I have an extra favor to ask. I'd like you to be Shikanoin's temporary supervisor. It'll be your duty to ensure that he handles his case properly, and that he doesn't disappear and neglect his work again. I'll be sure that the police station prepares the appropriate compensation. Oh, uh, yes, Traveler. I I'm sure we'd all really appreciate it. Hmm. Hazel seems to be happy with the idea. <laughs> you should thank the Traveler this time, Doshin Shikanoin. Otherwise, I don't think I would have let you off so easily. Here. Take this letter of complaint. It's written against you. Please consider carefully what to do with it. I do not wish to see another one. Understood? Huh? Someone filed a complaint? <laughs> that can't be right. Why would there be a complaint letter? Uh, you must not be doing your job properly and now you're attracting complaints. No, it really doesn't add up. You two don't get it. Although Madam Kujosara just made some harsh remarks, we all know that Heizo Senpai is a real whiz when it comes to cracking cases. He's the biggest asset on our team. Several leaders have risen through the ranks as a result of his achievements. He's definitely no slacker. Then he must have gotten himself into some kind of trouble. Well, let me see what's the deal here. Oh, and since you agreed to be my temporary supervisor, you'll find the desk where new case files are kept right over there. Would you mind helping me check what cases I need to deal with? <laughs> of course, but first I have to confirm what's going on, and whether or not the letter's legit. Please, have a look at the case files first. Hey, 
Tokyo Tox Fraud? What's that? Sounds interesting, whatever it is. What? Uh, not him again. So, have you gone through the case files? Is there anything that caught your eye? Oh, have they approved it already? <laughs> the Tenryo Commission certainly has become more... efficient ever since Kujo Kamaji took office. So, what is Hazotox Fraud? It's an anti-fraud public awareness event. Basically, Think of it as a short play about fraud. We'll get a few people to perform an entertaining drama in order to raise public awareness about the issue. Ooh, so it's a play? Paimon likes the sound of that. <laughs> well, see, fraud is a major issue here. You've traveled between different nations. I'm sure Mora isn't really an issue for you. You have to understand that scamming the poor of their money is essentially robbing them of their lives. Left unchecked, the situation could potentially deteriorate into something more... serious. Hmm, that makes sense. But will putting on a performance really work? It's hard to say. Preventing crimes is more difficult than solving them, there's no doubt about that. But prevention is also a more worthwhile cause. Maybe only a small number of people who attend the event will ever actually encounter a scam artist. And even then, of the handful of attendees who encounter said scam artist, I doubt many of them will be able to see through the scammer's ruse. But if even only one person escapes the clutches of a scam artist because of my event, then I'm willing to put on this play for that person. Alright, count us in! Today we are the anti-fraud messengers! <laughs> Great! First, we need three actors, two to play the scam artists and one to play the victim. I already have a couple candidates in mind for the roles of the scam artists, so come with me to the Grand Narukami Shrine. If we're going to the Grand Narukami Shrine, are you planning to recruit Nico for your play? She'd be really good at acting. <laughs> well, I guess you'll have to wait and see. Hey, Zo, what are you doing here, you little brat? Oh, and the Traveler, too. So, I assume you're here to see Lady Yae? <laughs> hey, come on, cuz. Maybe I'm just here to see you. <laughs> Don't play your little games with me. If the Traveler isn't looking for Lady Yae, then you must be here looking for Etsu, right? You still know me best, cuz. Please wait here. I'll go get her. Huh, so we're not here to see Miko? Bummer. I'm flattered. But even if I wanted to, do you really think I could convince Lady Yai to join a little event like mine? Get the Traveler to ask her next time. He can do it! Well, hello, Detective Hazo. It's been so long since you last came to see me. You know, it's cruel to keep a girl waiting. Hey, community service isn't all bad, is it? I'm sure it's better than prison, at least. That's right. I was careless and found myself caught up in a case of fraud. 
Detective Hazo arrested me, and I was sentenced to prison. For the record, I'm not the one who technically arrested you. Oh, come now, Detective Hazo. Don't pretend like you don't remember the part you played. You have a cold heart, Detective. Colder than an icicle in the middle of winter. How would those Doshin have nabbed me if you hadn't provided evidence of my involvement and whereabouts, hmm? They were so bland and functional. Not like you, Detective. When you took me down, you knew exactly what you were doing. So, uh, how did you end up here at the Shrine? I'm here doing community service, of course. After all the information Detective Hazo managed to squeeze out of me, he promised to help secure a reduced sentence from the court. But in the end, they hardly reduced my sentence at all. Even after serving a lengthy prison term, I am still required to perform community service. I have to spend the entire day sweeping leaves or wiping floors. Just look at what the work has done to my soft and delicate hands. <sighs> so, don't believe a word that comes out of his mouth. I helped you get community service because you were credited with assisting the investigation. But, if you find it too exhausting, I can always send you back to prison again. Oh, come on, Detective Hazo. Now you're just toying with me. Don't give me that. Listen, I'd like to invite you to the anti-fraud event I mentioned last time. It's tomorrow night, and you'll be a VIP guest. Let's see. Appearing in the event would be equivalent to... What? Five days of community service? How does that sound? Only five days? That's hardly anything. Five days not enough? Okay, how about four days? Hey! That's a day less than what you just promised me, Detective Hazo! Oh, my mistake. Three days. Uh, all right, I'll go! Just stop playing with my heart! And may I ask, will they also be coming as a guest tomorrow night? No wonder you're treating me so coldly today, Detective Hazo. Looks like you found someone else to keep you company. And what a charmer they are. I get what you see in them. I mean, you'd have to be blind not to. Atsu, now's not the time. If I hear you talking like that to my friend again, I'll make your community service even more unpleasant than your time in prison. Oh, I'm so sorry. I had no idea they were your friend. Uh, really. Well, now you do. Just be sure you're ready tomorrow. I'll send you the location, time of the event, and the script. So don't be late. All right. On to our next candidate. He should be in town right about now. I apologize for earlier. I don't know what came over me. Oh, Detective Hazo? He can't stand people like me, I'm sure of it. Although he sounds polite and friendly, I can tell that he treats inmates convicted of fraud differently. He's really got something against us. Do you think he may have been defrauded himself before? Impossible. Who could ever be cunning enough to fool Detective Hazo like that, hmm? Mr. Iba, how are you doing? Oh, well if it isn't Hazo. Thanks to you, I haven't kicked the bucket yet. Well, it's good to see you're alive. And, and well. All right, out with it. I know you wouldn't come see me for nothing. <laughs> I see you're still sharp as ever, Mr. Iba. Look, have you had a chance to think about that anti-fraud event I mentioned to you last time? You can forget it. I'm pushing 71 this year. You think I want to make a fool of myself? Are you sure? 
You know, this event is very well funded. And now that the Sakoku decree has been repealed, I heard that your granddaughter Kazumi wants to take the chance to travel. If you participate, she can go without worrying about money at all. Huh? How did you know? Sure, I paid a hefty fine at the time, but I can still afford her travels. You're Heizo's colleague, aren't you? How haven't you heard about this? Well, it just so happens that Mr. Iba was a well-known figure in Inazuma back in the day. His Iba trading guild was even bigger than the current International Trade Association. Don't bring it up again. If I hadn't been misled by that foreign merchant, I never would have become a commercial scammer. Fortunately, young Heizo here has some respect for the elderly and applied for a probationary sentence. Otherwise, I don't think I would have ever seen the light of day again. Well, if Hazel was so good to you, then you should help him out too! Ha! <laughs> <laughs> He's not as innocent as he looks, you know. He just knows it's easier to get information when we're chatting outside. Ask him if you don't believe me. <laughs> Those are some pretty harsh words, Mr. Eva. Uh, anyway, I can't help you with that, uh, event, or whatever you call it. Ah, uh, man alive. What should I do now? I already told Kazumi that you'd show up and caution everybody about avoiding fraud. I'm sure it'd be beneficial for everyone, and Kazumi even agreed to come and listen. How can I explain to her that you were too worried about being embarrassed? Oh, she might even think that you feel no remorse at all. You... you imbecile! You should have told me about this first! Come on now, how could I have known that you'd refuse to participate? Why, you... You sure are a crafty one, just like your father. So you'll join us? What choice do I have? <laughs> Using my granddaughter to force me into some... event. People these days. <laughs> The world needs you to step up. I will send the time and place of the event, as well as the script. So don't forget to prepare. All right, all right. Very well. Well then. Now we only need to find the last person to play the role of the fooled victim. We don't want someone too clever for this role. Otherwise, they'd see right through this ruse and the drama would come to a grinding halt. Hmm. No! Clever. Oh! Paimon knows the perfect candidate. Oh yeah, I know that guy. I've seen him in the police station a handful of times, though I've never actually spoken to him before. Do you know where we can find him? Well, we did just see a file called the Prince of Mischief in Hanamizaka. That's gotta be Ito. He must be in Hanamizaka. All right then. To Hanamizaka we go. Oh, but knowing his reputation, I'll need to bring a little something along just to guarantee we can secure his participation. You go ahead. I'll catch up. How about that, kiddo? My little prince of mischief's got some moves, huh? Guess that means your Onikabuto is now my Onikabuto. <laughs> Ito! What are you up to? Huh? Oh, Paimon! My compadre! This is a nice surprise. What brings you out this way? What? No, 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 it's not, no, it's nothing like that. They let me look after their own Ikabuto, just for a little while, for safekeeping, and then, uh, you know, once they've gotten stronger, they can come and take them right back. You win some, you lose some. That's right, my little guy. Good attitude. All right, see you around. <laughs> yeah, bye. There's just no helping this guy.
Oh, an anti-fraud event? Ah, I'll level with you, compadre. I have no idea what that is, but uh, if you want me there, I can think of nowhere I'd rather be. Oh, except that there's this Oni Kabuto Battle Royale tomorrow night that I was planning on going to. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be huge. <laughs> no holds barred, winner takes home all the Oni Kabuto. And uh, as you can see, my Prince of Mischief has a pretty good chance of winning this thing, so uh, ah, if it was any other day, you know? Do you think all of those Oni Kabuto together would be a match for my one? Here's a picture. Let me know what you think. Huh? Well, what this? What is this? How'd it get so big? What are you feeding this thing? Look at those beautiful demon stripes. Those those razor sharp horns. Is this the fabled Emperor Oni Kabuto? This is a small token we provide for VIPs. If you're willing to attend, then one of these will be yours at the end of the event. Whoa, okay. I'm there. <laughs> Wait a sec. You look familiar. Who are you anyway? And furthermore, do Oni Kabuto really come in this size? You're not trying to con me, are you? Because the more I think about it, the more I'm inclined to think that... You're a contestant in tomorrow night's Oni Kabuto Battle Royale! Yeah! You lost to me in a previous Beetle Battle, and now you're trying to get the reigning champ out of the way. Without Prince of Mischief to contend with, you'll be free to sweep in and take all the Oni Kabuto! Am I right or am I right? Nice try, you little punk. Ten out of ten for the pitch, but, uh, you picked the wrong victim. Okay, okay. Then again, consider this. If your Prince of Mischief isn't competing, what's the point of me taking part? After all, all I'd stand to win is a bunch of puny little larvae. No? Well, uh, uh, huh. You've stumped me there. <laughs> you, uh, you are completely right. I can't believe I didn't think of that. <laughs> Sorry, my bro, my main man, my buddy. I had y'all wrong. So, are you sure this guy's our best choice? Yeah, see? He was already wondering if you were trying to con him. Then allow me to introduce myself. I'm Shiganoin Hazo. I've seen you around a few times before at the police station. Huh? Oh, yeah, I remember now. No wonder you looked so familiar. You were that guy who was in for stealing other people's Oni Kabuto, right? Listen, Hazo, hombre, did you apologize to them? You can lose like a man, you can win like a man, but you can never steal like a man. And that's a little Ito nugget. Uh, Ito! He works there for crying out loud! He's not one of your fellow inmates. What? Oh, jeez. Ah, oh, what's wrong with me? How could I forget? Of course I know you. I remember you now. For real, <laughs> this time. You're the guy who sells lavender melons at the station, aren't you? A lavender melon seller? At the police station? Don't be ridiculous! I know what I saw, okay? Several times now I've been sitting there starving in jail when this guy comes and slips me a few lavender melons on the sly. Didn't even want payment. Solid guy. Yeah, that was me. But it was only because your assistant, Kuki Shinobu, asked me to look out for you. What? So Shinobu was behind it? Wait, I... I so, hombre, you're, you're... You're not a lavender melon seller? Look, we're... We're getting hung up on all the wrong details here. The important detail right now is that I am the host of tomorrow night's event. And if you show up, the Oni Kabuto in the picture is yours. Deal! Done! But, uh, could I get another look at that picture first? Just, uh, a little peeksie? You'll have all the time in the world to inspect the real article once the event's over. Uh, okay, sure. I can wait. So, uh, hombre, is there anything I need to do to prepare? Because if I'm doing this, I'm bringing my A-game, all right? No half measures here, I'm gonna do this right. He sure picks his moments to start acting responsibly. Okay, so for this event, you, my, uh, <clears throat> bro, 
We'll be participating in a short anti-fraud play along with two other VIP attendees. The main thing we ask is that you just relax. Try not to be nervous. I have the script, uh, right here, if you want to take a- Script? What? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like someone's never seen the Arataki Gang perform before, huh? <laughs> Don't you worry, hombre. The Arataki Gang is a little beyond the need for scripts. You'll see, this Oni Kabuto will be well worth your investment. You, uh, don't need a script? Wow, well, now I'm excited. See you there tomorrow night. You bet, I'll be there. I'm gonna tell the gang about this, too. They'll all be there to support us. It's almost time. Everyone ready? All right. Then let's get this show started. Oh, I can't wait, Mr. Hazo. Let's get going, Hazo. Emperor Oni Kabuto, hang in there, your highness. I'm coming for you. It takes years to make a fortune, but only a moment to lose it all to a scam artist. Welcome to the first Hazo Talks Fraud. I am your eponymous host, Hazo. Okay, I'm delighted to have you all here today to explore the topic of fraud. To help everyone avoid becoming the victim of scam artists themselves, we thought we'd invite several VIPs with a lot of experience in this area to perform a little play with an anti-fraud message. Please join me in welcoming to the stage, Miss Etsu, Mr. Iba, and the venerable gentleman, Mr. Arataki Ito. Without further ado, let the show begin. <clears throat> it was just another bright sunny day when a distressed Miss Etsu brought her elderly grandpa, Iba, into the police station to report a crime. There, they were greeted by a kindly doshin, surname Harataki. Doshin Arataki, please help us! My poor grandpa has been defrauded! Doshin Arataki? I, uh, <laughs> you talking to me? Ahem. <clears throat> Perhaps for want of familiarity with the script, a confused look creeps over Doshin Arataki's face, and he asks himself that age-old question. Who am I? You are Doshin Arataki! <laughs> You're Doshin Arataki! Oh, so I'm this I, I'm in the play! Right! Yeah! <laughs> okay, got it. I'm I'm a Doshin, of course. Okay, <clears throat> I got this. <sighs> Ma'am, can you tell who it was that defrauded your grandfather? Rest assured, the Tenryo Commission and I are here to bring them to justice! I don't know. It was too late when I found out. They took all of my grandpa's money, and all they left was this note. Doshin Arataki frowns as he realizes this is more complicated than he thought. He takes the note in his hand and reads it out loud. I am the Raiden Shogun. I am currently being held hostage by the Crux fleet and urgently need 200,000 mora to secure my release. Please place the Ransom Mora on the north coast of the deserted island. When all of this is over, I will promote you to General of the Tenryo Commission. It's the Almighty Shogun! <clears throat> we cannot let Her Excellency come to harm. Uh, but this is a scam, surely. I mean, 200,000 mora? Kinda lowballing it for the Electro Archon, don't you think? Shouldn't it be like, uh, 300 thou at the very least? Well, I sure thought so, but Grandpa's already parted with the money. Well, then we gotta get it back. I is there still time? Before I could go out to look for it, Grandpa received another note. Doshin Arataki takes the note and reads it out loud. 
I am Miss Hina. I am currently raising funds to publish a photo book. I urgently need 300,000 mora for publishing fees. In return for your support, you will receive a limited edition signed photograph. It's Miss Hina. <clears throat> we can't leave poor Miss Hina in a tight spot. You're right, Gramps. Is 300,000 mora enough? I, I can spare some too if we need to make up the difference. Maybe I can get a photo of Miss Hina too. I, I mean, uh, we gotta help Miss Hina out here. It's a scam, Doshinarataki! Snap out of it! Oh, right, yeah, no, yeah, because if Miss Hina needed funds, she'd come to me first, you know, uh, as her number one fan. Why would she go asking this old geezer for help? <laughs> These con artists don't know who they're up against. <laughs> well, anyway, not long after Grandpa handed over the money, he received yet another note. Doshin Arataki grabs the note and reads it aloud. I am Arataki Ito. I was recently framed for a crime I totally did not commit, and now I'm stuck here in prison. I am in urgent need of 500,000 mora as bail. In return for your help getting me out, I will bring the whole gang over to thank you personally at your house. Must be a scammer, surely. <clears throat> I've never heard of this person, and they're asking me for 500,000 mora. Wait a minute. This is a scam. I'm Arataki Ito. Uh, you are? But your name tag says... Doshin Arataki follows Miss Etsu's gaze to the name tag emblazoned on his chest, which reads, Arataki Shmito. What kind of whack job script is this? Am I me or ain't I? So, the bail money? Nope, no way, not a chance. Arataki Ito would never ask innocent people for Mora in order to post bail. Whoever wrote this is a liar and a cheat. And we gotta get out there and get this guy off our streets. But just as Doshin Arataki is being overcome with righteous indignation, the sound of Miss Etsu's weeping brings his attention back to her. <laughs> Miss Etsu, don't you worry. We're gonna catch the people who did this. Even if you do catch them, how are we ever going to get Grandpa's money back? Oh, whatever are we going to do about all those Onikabuto? Onikabuto? Wait, uh, what, what was that about the uh, Onikabuto? Oh, well, Grandpa is a major Onikabuto breeder in our village. His are the biggest and strongest Onikabuto around. People come from far and wide to buy from him. We recently received an order that was too big for our current capacity. We were planning to expand Grandpa's facilities, but then we were swindled out of all of our money. <laughs> right after we'd signed the contract, too! If we don't deliver these Onikabuto on time, Grandpa will have to pay huge damages. Oh, what are we going to do? Man, what's that saying? It's like, um, uh, it never rains, but it snowballs. <sighs> exactly what we're dealing with. Etsu, my dear, don't worry. I'll sell the house if I have to. We'll find a way through. But then where will we stay? <laughs> Please help us, Doshin Hartaki. All we need is the 500,000 mora that was taken from us. Can you help us raise it? Or, or maybe you could lend it to us? Grandpa's business is going very well. We just need help getting over this hurdle. Doshi Narutaki, please. If you lend us the money, I'm sure I can make it up to you by... I won't hear of it. As a public servant, I would never dream of taking advantage of a person in need. I was going to say, by giving you part ownership of the Oni Kabuto farm. Oh, so that's what you were, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not as enticing an offer as I was. Uh, wait, w w uh, an Onikabuto farm, how many Onikabuto did you say you have? Because if it's more than, say, ten... Ten thousand! What? Ten thousand? Well, th that's more Onikabuto than I've seen in my whole life! Please help us, as long as we get through this. Those 10,000 Onikabuto are yours to keep. 
10,000 Onikabuto. Hey, if, if, if I looked after them, they'd have little baby Onikabuto. And then the, the little baby Onikabuto would grow up and have little baby Onikabuto of their own. Doshin Arataki is struck by a sudden wave of pure elation. His face breaks into a big, beaming smile. But what does he do next? Miss Etsu, don't you worry. I'm gonna help you out. But 10,000 is too many. I can only accept 1,000. Wait, no, what am I saying? 500 Onikabuto. As a Doshin of the Tenryo Commission, it is my duty to serve. How could I abuse my position to take advantage of you? That's great news, Master Arataki. What a wonderful person you are. So strong and handsome and committed to doing the right thing. It's rare to find these days. <laughs> yep, that's me. All right, there's just one final question that needs answering. What question is that? The question is... Where's my Mora? Huh. Yo, Hazo, my ombre, a uh, question for you. What's my character's salary in the script? Oh, also, any inheritance or other lump sums I should know about? <laughs> Basically, can I afford this 500,000 Mora? I mean, Shmito. Can sh I can afford it. <laughs> can Shmito. Ahem. Faced with a damsel in distress, Doshin Arataki fights to remain level-headed and asks that other age-old question. Where's my Mora? Suddenly, he feels a strange compulsion to slide his hand into his pocket where, it turns out, a bank check has been quietly nestled all along. He draws the check out and inspects it. Today is payday, and this is his salary. The amount? 500,000 mora. Whoa, check it out! A check for 500,000 mora! <laughs> Where'd you come from, buddy? Misatsu, get this. Turns out I just got paid 500,000 mora today. Well, here's your mora. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Master Arataki, what's wrong? Doshin Arataki stretches out his hand. But wait, just as he is about to hand over the check to Miss Etsu, he hesitates, tightly pinching one end of the check betwixt his two fingers. All he needs to do now is release the check, and it will fall into Miss Etsu's eager hands. But let go of the check he does not. Master Arataki, let go! Wait, wait. Something's not right. Doshin Arataki is having second thoughts. Has something caught his attention? Has it aroused his suspicion? Has he finally realized the truth? So, uh, this is an anti-fraud show, right? Huh? <clears throat> A spark of intuition bursts to life in Doshin Arataki's mind. Since this is an anti-fraud event, I have a question. Is he about to ask the most critical question of all? I gotta ask. This is it. Here it comes. Uh, does a Doshin really get paid this much? 500,000 mora. Enough to get an Electro Archon out from a hostage situation, then go pay for Miss Hina's publishing costs. You telling me the average Doshin can do all that on one pay packet? I don't know, seems pretty fishy to me. Hey, compadre, what do you think? Am I being scammed here? As the spark of intuition flickers and threatens to fade, Doshin Arataki clutches around in desperation, hoping to find a source of fuel to feed the flames of enlightenment. Traveler, are you going to help this poor man out of his predicament? Aha! Etsu and Iba! So that's what's going on here! You two are the scam artists. You put on this damsel in distress and elderly grandpa act to win my sympathy, then used a few cheap tricks to get my attention. Then you dangled the bait in front of me, waiting for me to bite. <sighs> Darn it. I knew it. Who in their right mind would give away Onikabuto for free, let alone 10,000 of them? 
It's too good to be true, and that's how I know you're the scam artists. You got a lot of nerve trying to scam a Doshin. You're coming with me, and you'll give a full confession if you know what's good for you. Finally, with the help of his intuition and a little guidance from beyond the void, Doshin Arataki successfully avoided being defrauded. Not only that, but he asked a critical question. Who in their right mind would give away Oni Kabuto for free? I ask you all, is there such a thing as free Oni Kabuto? Free Mora? Or does nothing in life come for free? All right, remember, it takes years to make a fortune, but only a moment to lose it all to a scam artist. Thank you once again for watching. Hazo Talks Fraud. Stay alert, everybody, and see you again next time. So, how's my acting? I think I did just fine without a script. Those two would-be scam artists need to up their game if they want to have a chance of taking me down. Uh, hello! Without that hint from the Traveler, you would have handed that cash away without a second thought. Right, yeah. I should thank him for the timely hint. But I pretty much knew off the bat that something fishy was about to go down, so, uh, you know, it was just a matter of time before I saw right through their scam. <laughs> Seriously, oldest trick in the book. Who's gonna fall for that? Old tricks they may well be, but the reason they've stood the test of time is that the ideal victim is always out there somewhere. People who are behind on the times, naive, socially isolated, or have cognitive deficiencies. Just because they don't always get noticed doesn't mean they're not there. Scammers cast a wide net. Sure, maybe 10,000 fish will escape, but they only need one catch for them to win and for us to lose. Well, no more losing from now on. Not with me here to protect everyone. I think we can all agree that my performance today shows I'm savvy enough to keep the scammers at bay. <laughs> Don't be too confident. Anyway, Ito, my old... What was it again? Ah, yes. Bro, here's the reward you were promised. Ah, music to my ears. Emperor Oni Kabuto, come to Papa. Whoa, look at those sharp horns and those beautiful stripes. Uh, well, hold on. Uh, hey, Zo, <laughs> my ombre, why won't it move? Hey, bud, move. Oh no, I think this one might have, uh, joined the big beetle battle in the sky. It's a figurine, so not the moving kind. What? A figure? So, it's a fake? Man alive, you seem a little surprised. Wait, you didn't actually think this was a real Onikabuto, did you? <laughs> no, surely not. Ito, old chap, you must have seen from the photograph that it was a figurine. Don't tell me you didn't notice. Really? You little punk! Give me my Emperor Oni Kabuto now! Where do you want to go next? If you'd like to see Liyue's tourist spots, I have a few references. Traveler, are you going to help this poor man out of his predicament? You follow my heart. All right, then. There's no way a Doshin makes 500,000 mora in a single pay packet. Two innocent victims, Miss Etsu and Mr. Iba, come to a Doshin for help. And the Doshin, what, whips out a 500,000 mora check? Yeah, likely story. There's only one possible explanation. Who's got two horns and carries around a fake checkbook? Yep, this guy. With this fake check for 500,000 mora, I almost swindled Etsu and Iba out of 10,000 Onikabuto, the last thing these poor folks needed after the recent string of catastrophes they faced. 
My mind is blown. Craziest plot twist I ever heard. The criminal was the main character all along. Miss Setsu, I'm afraid I can't let myself give you this fake check. But I will do everything in my power to raise 500,000 genuine mora for you. So don't you worry. What the? <clears throat> Jeez. In the end, Doshin Arataki listened to the voice of his heart and narrowly avoided being defrauded in his own unconventional way. But regrettably, he failed to ask the critical question. Who in their right mind would give away Oni Kabuto for free? I ask you all, is there such a thing as free Oni Kabuto? Free Mora? Or does nothing in life come for free? Thank you all for watching Hazo Talks Fraud. Don't get greedy and you won't be needy. Stay alert and you won't get hurt. You never know where scammers may lurk. See you all next time. Wait, wait, uh, my man. <laughs> what did you mean when you said I avoided being defrauded? I thought I was the fraudmeister here. Maybe someone should have read the script. Miss Etsu and Master Eva were the scam artists, duh! You were the one they were trying to scam! What? Huh? What, what? I was being conned? Darn, I can't believe they got me! Well, you still managed to protect your money. In the end, they didn't succeed. Yeah, but uh, that was a happy coincidence. They scammed me, and I fell for it. Guessing it wasn't your first time either, huh? Ugh, it was such a cheap trick, too. Oh, this is killing me! The trick is a common one for a reason, but don't underestimate it. That's how you end up being a victim. But how am I gonna protect my gang if even I get fooled by such cheap tricks? Don't blame yourself, old chap. In, in, in fact, you know what? I was also conned today. Yeah, me, of all people. Does that make you feel better? You too, ombre? No way! W no, that's impossible. You're just trying to cheer me up. Oh, no, no, it's the truth. Please, just take a look at the present I got for you. Wait, uh, why can't it move? That's just it. I'm sorry to say, it's just a figurine. What? A figure? Y you mean, it's a fake? Uh, yeah, and it's all my fault. I was duped by the Onikabuto vendor's false advertising. What a colossal fool I am. Taken in by a common street vendor? Ugh. So you really were conned, dude! Let me take a second to let that sink in. Oh, gotta say, although I didn't get my Emperor Oni Kabuto, somehow, knowing that even Hazel got conned kinda puts me back in a good mood. It's, uh, strange. Maybe I'm sharper than I'm giving myself credit for. Great minds think alike, so, uh, me and my ombre here, kinda equally matched. <laughs> hey, by the way, compadre, looks like you're the only one out of the three of us who didn't get conned today. But you better watch out. We got fooled not because we were stupid, but because those scam artists are some crafty dastards. I want you to have this figurine as a reminder of the fact that today, Hazel and I both got conned, but we both grew a little wiser too. I hope that whenever you see it, you'll remember how cunning those con artists were and how difficult it was for Hazel and I to see through their schemes. Then, you'll always keep your wits about you, and you'll never become a victim yourself. Yep, that's right. No one will ever manage to con you. So, have you gone through the case files? Is there anything that caught your eye? Another dog's gone missing, huh? 
I know that the detective agency regularly receives such cases. You know, if we ever had the time, we could tally how many dogs go missing in Inazuma each day, and then... <sighs> anyway, just leave that case to Uesugi. This complaint letter I received is more important. I was hoping I wouldn't have to drag you into this, but it's just occurred to me that with your help, I might be able to wrap up this problem. Alright then, tell us about the complaint letter. It's from Songo, the president of Bonton Songo Detective Agency. I assume you've met her before? You can say that. Sango's complaint letter accuses me of abusing my power for personal gain and blatantly concealing the truth behind the Ryuji case from years ago. <sighs> Seriously, do I really seem like the type of person who'd do that? <laughs> concealing the truth? That definitely sounds like something you would do. Hey, 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 don't judge a book by its cover, all right? Let's just go to the detective agency and talk to Sango. We'll need to speak with her to get to the bottom of this. Welcome back, Mr. Heizo. I'm glad you're all right. How about some tonkatsu? You must have missed the taste of home after so long. Maybe next time, Ryuji. Seems like somebody's been expecting me. And I'm afraid they're only going to be disappointed once again. Well, well, look who it is. The great Detective Heizo. What nonsense were you talking about just now? I've been worried about you, you know. So much so that I took the trouble to write that heartfelt letter to the Tenryo Commission. Well, was it sufficiently flattering for you? Uh-oh. They're at it again. <sighs> Let's not waste the traveler's time, Songo. Just tell me, what do you want? <laughs> Fine by me. My request is simple. Disclose all the details of the Ryuji case. It's time you stop hiding the truth and let me investigate it thoroughly. First of all, that case has already been solved. Second, I've disclosed everything the police station has on the case. And third... Enough! You can only fool Ryuji with that. If you don't want to cooperate, I can assure you that I will write more letters to the headquarters of the Tenryo Commission. I will not give up on this case. <sighs> What's going on here? Paimon doesn't have a clue what you two are talking about. <sighs> All right, let me explain. Several years ago, a terrible murder took place in the police station. I was still working at the Tenryo Commission then, and the victim was actually my dear boss. Due to various factors, I was deemed to be the top suspect, which is why it's called the Ryuji case. Also, Hazel wasn't a part of the police station back then. He was a detective at the agency. Um, which at the time was called the Bonton Sango and Hazo Detective Agency. Huh? That's crazy! But, uh, wait. Then why did Hazel leave? Hmm. After the incident, I was quickly convicted and sent to prison. Fortunately, Sango then promptly proved my innocence and caught the real murderer. But that murderer was actually just a dummy to throw us off, am I right, Detective Shikinoe? <sighs> Sango thought that everything went smoothly, so much so that she suspected the real murderer was someone else. Of course, Detective Heizo was also helping with the investigation, but after a long time, he still came up empty-handed. Later on, he decided to join the police station to continue his investigation on the inside, which is why he left the detective agency. Ha! That's what I thought, too. I was foolish enough to believe that Detective Shikinoe and I shared a common goal. But I was wrong about him. He has no sense of loyalty at all. He just wanted to become an official as a means of gaining fame and fortune. Come on, stop exaggerating. Let me set the record straight here. 
First, I joined the police station long after that murder case happened, and it had nothing to do with any inside investigation. That's just somebody's wishful thinking. Second, purely out of curiosity, I did investigate the case later from within the police station. My conclusion was that the suspect Songo had caught was in fact the real murderer. And lastly, when Songo didn't buy my conclusion and asked me to disclose all related case files from the police station, I did exactly as she asked. I didn't hide anything. Huh. He's lying right through his teeth. That's it. I want this to end once and for all. Since the Traveler's my supervisor today, they have complete access to all the police station's files. If he's willing to help re-examine the case and arrives at the same conclusion that I did, then you won't have to doubt me anymore. Whoa. Huh? Unless you don't trust the Traveler. <laughs> Come on, say it. <laughs> it's not about whether the Traveler's trustworthy. I'm just wondering if you will interfere somehow. <laughs> the thought never even crossed my mind. You have to swear that you will not mislead the Traveler by any means, and let him investigate the truth on his own. No problem. Cross my heart, hope to die. Well, Traveler, are you willing to help me with this? Will you agree to re-examine the Ryuji case and find the truth? You can bill me later for however much you'd like as compensation. Songo, really? However much they want? Money is valuable, no doubt. But pursuing the truth is the reason I started this agency. The Ryuji case is the only case I failed to solve. I am willing to give you... Anything. All right. I'm counting on you, Traveler. You hear that, Detective Shikanoin? Ha! Now we just need to wait and see. All right, all right, I got it. No need to keep yammering like that. You'll scare the kids next door. Come on, let's go back to the police station. Hang out here for a sec. I need to go to the archives to get the case files. For now, why don't you go and chat with Yuriki Owada over there? He worked on this case too back in the day. No, no, you misunderstand. It's not that I want you to look into this. It's just that you're the only one who can. You're the only one I can think of who Songo would ever believe. She trusts in both your qualities and abilities. So I hope your findings can finally convince her and put an end to this whole thing. Sure, she's just writing complaint letters for now, but who knows what she'll do in the future. <laughs> Alright, I'll go get those case files. You go ahead and talk to Yuriki Owada for a while. Oh, hello there! The Ryuji case. So you want to reinvestigate that one? That was several years ago now, but I still remember it clearly. It's pretty hard to forget something like that. Especially when the victim was the head of this police station. His name was Takatsukasa Isamu, the younger brother of Takatsukasa Susumu, head of the Takatsukasa clan. He was really one of a kind. Decisive, brave, and smart. He was much younger than me, and already had quite a reputation. I'm sure he would have gone far in the Tenryo Commission, if only he was still alive. What a shame. Who would have guessed someone was plotting against him? <laughs> People will believe anything they hear. Everyone in the police station knew that Ryuji saw Takatsu Kase Isamu like a father. Ryuji was an orphan, you know. Before he joined the station, he had been taking odd jobs here and there. It was Isamu who really took him under his wing. Ryuji was simple and not particularly bright, but he was very loyal to those who treated him well. He's also hardworking. Isamu must have seen these qualities in him and decided to keep Ryuji by his side. Ryuji worked with him for years after that, and was even promoted to be his personal assistant. 
Do you really think Ryuji would do anything to harm him? So, then why was Ryuji convicted? Even Paimon can tell that's a mistake! Well, here comes the interesting part of the case. Within a week, and before all the loose ends had even been tied up, Ryuji received his conviction. Moreover, it was signed by Madame Kujo Sara. What? Why would Sara do something like that? <laughs> I'm getting older now, and my eyesight is poor. I can't see too clearly anymore. Hey, come on, Yoriki Owada, there's nothing to see. It's obvious that the Kujo clan did it. You can't just go around saying things like that, Wisuki. Those were just hearsay. There was no evidence. That's not true. Traveler, you may be unaware that the Takatsukasa clan has always been assisting the Kujo clan in the Tenryo Commission. But who doesn't want to be the boss, right? And Takatsukasa Isamu was the key figure for the Takatsukasa clan to bring down the Kujo clan. At that time, no one was held in higher regard than Isamu. So, naturally, the Kujo clan saw him as a potential threat. Kujo Takayuki must have been planning it all along, that rascal. Takayuki is able to control the Takatsukasa clan as long as he's in power. But by the time he retires, Isamu would have been at the apex of his political power, while Masahito and Kamaji of the Kujo clan would still have been too young. <laughs> The two of them wouldn't stand a chance against Isamu. You think Kujo Takayuki would simply sit back while Isamu gained traction? So he decided to strike first. You youngsters and your conspiracy theories. No, it's true. It's the only way to explain it. Otherwise, why would an impartial person like Madame Kujo Sara sign Ryuji's conviction so quickly? They had to find a scapegoat to pacify the Takatsukasa clan, so Kujo Takayuki must have told her to sign it immediately. I'm not accusing Madame Kujo Sara of anything, mind you. I, I respect her very much. But maybe she had no other choice. <laughs> what do you know? I'm sure Madame Kujo Sara must have had her own reasons. The guy was a forensic expert who worked in the station named Shiroyama. I have to admit, he wasn't easy to track down. That Sango really is something, though. She caught him without even breaking a sweat. It turned out that after poisoning Isamu, Shiroyama secretly took the poison to Ryuji's place in order to frame him. Later on, the poison was also found in the forensic office, but that was already after Shiroyama's death. He confessed everything in a testament. That's right. He hung himself in the forensic office not long after Sango was on his trail. Probably because he knew it was only a matter of time before he would be caught. Of course, he didn't admit whether he had been prompted by Kujo Takayuki. He took the responsibility alone. I bet Kujo Takayuki promised him a sizable compensation. After all, Shiroyama had a family to feed. There you go again, pulling conclusions out of thin air. There wasn't any evidence of that at all. Listen, I can almost guarantee that it was the Takatsukasa clan who invited Sango to investigate. We all knew that Ryuji was just a scapegoat. You think the Takatsukasa clan wouldn't figure that out? They're not stupid. So, they were suspicious of the Kujo clan and invited Sango to take the case. However, the Kujo clan were still a step ahead and were able to remove themselves from the situation before the whole thing blew up. They drove Shiriyama to take all the blame as well as his own life. A perfectly clean cut for the Kujo clan. With Shiriyama dead, there was no one left to testify. Even the Electro Archon herself wouldn't be able to do anything. <sighs> you make up stuff faster than a politician. It's a wonder nobody's asked you to be an advisor yet. Hey, that's their loss. <sighs> the whole thing is starting to sound complicated. Hey, I brought the files. <laughs> I bet you got quite an earful just now, huh? <laughs> but don't believe everything they say. 
After all, people can tell you anything, and it's hard to separate truth from rumors without facts. So what really matters is the case files. Everything laid out here is all that the police station has about the case. Please, take a look. Remember, you may find many clues during an investigation, but not all of them are useful. And in some cases, the clues you will find will not only be useless, but downright misleading. Also, if a clue cannot corroborate anything on its own, you can always compare it with other clues, and maybe then you'll find what you're looking for. Okay. That should just about do it. I'm looking forward to your results. Uh, hold on. What actually counts as a result? Usually, you need to find two things from these clues. A proven motive and proven means. Once you can confirm these two things, the criminal can be proven guilty. All right, you can go ahead and get started now. I look forward to hearing your verdict. Yuji's conviction really was signed by Kujosara. But now we know she had it wrong! Conviction was also signed by Kujo Sara, just like Ryuji's. Hmm, a synthetic toxin? What's that? Huh? That's weird. There's nothing here! Oh, this must be some of the false information that Hazel told us to look out for. All kinds of stuff. Think of it, Shiroyama was a forensic doctor. 
He could easily pull off something like this. Person. But something about the tone sounds weird. Shiroyama was the murderer, right? That is, if he was telling the truth, of course. So, what did you find? Have you come to a conclusion? Really? You found the criminal's motive and means that quickly? <laughs> awesome! All right. Let's talk about the motive first. What clue reveals the criminal's motive? <gasps> Excellent work! According to the victim's message, the two had deep conflicts. Although we cannot confirm whether the poison had been requested by the victim or not, it is true that Isamu used Shiroyama's family to blackmail him. Such circumstances could be enough motive for Shiroyama to commit the crime. But wasn't Takatsukasa Isamu good to Shiroyama? He even went to Shiroyama's house to bring health supplements. <gasps> but maybe he didn't really bring health supplements. Maybe it was something bad. <laughs> is that what you think, Paimon? Well, we later found out that what Takatsukasa Isamu sent to Shiroyama's house was indeed health supplements. But if you consider the circumstances, what he sent wasn't important. What was important is that sending the supplements was actually a dangerous signal. Isamu was essentially implying, I can put anything in your wife's supplements at any time. If you really care about her safety, then get me what I want. sounds like a real threat! Uh... You're not really that dark inside, are you? You don't really catch criminals by standing in the light, do you? Basically, these two clues work to verify each other, and the murderer's motive is confirmed. Now, all that's left is the means of the crime. Next, which clue confirms the criminal's means? So, what did you find? Have you come to a conclusion? Bingo! The autopsy report confirms that the cause of death was a special toxin. The testament indicates that Chiroyama used his position as a forensic expert to mix the toxin into the cold medicine taken by the deceased. But is that really the truth? Is it not possible that the toxin was mixed into the fish liver paste? 
Well, according to the toxicology report, this white powder only dissolves in water. Neither rice nor the fish liver paste could be used as a carrier of the toxin. The cold medicine was the only option. Putting the poison elsewhere would not only fail to guarantee a lethal dose, but would also increase the chance of it being noticed by the deceased. Therefore, the means is also confirmed. Add that to the motive for the crime and... Whoa! So the murderer really was Shiroyama! Yep, pretty clear cut, wouldn't you say? Look, I really don't know what Sago is so suspicious about. Yeah, it's pretty clear-cut. Huh, you could say it's almost too clear-cut. Oh, well, let's hear them. Maybe I have answers. What's bugging you? <sighs> this also puzzles me. Maybe someone doesn't want us being privy to the content inside, or maybe Shiroyama tore a bunch of pages out by accident. But regardless, this isn't essential to the case. Like I said before, a lot of what comes up in an investigation is irrelevant information. The crucial elements are Shiroyama's motive and means, which we have established. Maybe the report was wrong. The International Trade Association is a gathering place for merchants from all over. Countless merchants pass through the port of Rito every day. It's natural for there to be a couple of missing records here or there. Hmm, <laughs> very nice. Tom marks for attention to detail. It doesn't have any real bearing on the case, but let me explain how that works for you. So. Why would Madame Kujosara sign one conviction sentencing Ryuji to temporary incarceration awaiting trial, and another conviction sentencing Shiroyama to death? You may have heard some rumors back at the station that when this case first came up, the Kujo clan higher-ups were in dire need of a scapegoat to keep the Takatsukasa clan off their backs. And poor Ryuji became the successful candidate. In less than a week, the conviction was drafted, sent to Madame Kujo Sara, and signed. Allegedly, she knew what it was about as soon as she saw it, and signed it with no questions asked. But anyone who buys this story clearly doesn't know that much about Madame Kujo Sara. She's the most principled person in the entire Tenryo Commission, for goodness sake. So, how would she respond to a case filled with unanswered questions and no confession from the suspect? Oh! You mean... Exactly. Before she signed it, she changed Ryuji's conviction from the death sentence to temporary incarceration. Ryuji escaped a disastrous fate without ever realizing it. Had Madame Kujosara not changed his sentence, Sanga would have been seeking justice for a dead man. Why was Sara so lenient with Ryuji? That's the wrong question. This wasn't about Ryuji, but Madame Kujo Sara's principles. The conviction could have been for a Ryuji, a, a Guji, heck, even a Tanuki, and she would have made the same decision. Given the enormous pressure she was under at the time, I'd say she did the most she could. Don't you think? Pressure? Really? Was someone higher up putting pressure on Sara? The pressure came from all sides. The deceased was the leader of the police station and the rising star of the Takatsukasa clan. All eyes were on this case. How this became reduced to the unimaginative rumor that Madame Kujo Sara convicted Ryuji under pressure from her superiors, I have no idea. Ugh. Rumors here, conspiracy theories there, oh, lies at every turn! Fortunately, Madame Kujo Sara works in an open and transparent manner, and pays no heed to rumors like this. 
she just rolls her eyes and forgets all about them. Just because she has never publicly clarified the truth doesn't mean she was hiding anything. So when I asked her about it, saying it was relevant to a case I was working on, she just told me how it was. <laughs> Believe me, in this case, more than any other, I have checked every last detail. Well, I've answered all your lingering questions, and you've checked all the material the police station has, so... What do you think? Case closed? Hmm... Paimon still feels like something doesn't add up. But... Then again, Hazel did give us all the files the police station had. Ugh, this is annoying. I don't follow. Enlighten me. Huh! Right! Why do you keep emphasizing police station every single time? You tell me. Why do I keep emphasizing police station every time? <laughs> so we're finally here, huh? I was starting to think our investigation was about to end a little early. That would have been a real shame. Man alive, you finally saw through my little game. You're absolutely right. There is other information that the police station doesn't have. Reason being? It's my own evidence. And this evidence should help answer a couple of your questions more clearly. Why was the research log from the Office of Forensic Science blank? And where did the white powder come from? Ha ha! Paimon knew you were keeping secrets! <laughs> Don't you have secrets too? Uh, no. N uh, nope. Definitely not. Let's talk somewhere else. This isn't the best place for this discussion. This is a quiet spot. Let's talk here. All right. Here's the secret I've been keeping all along. The torn out pages from the research log of the Office of Forensic Science. Great! Uh, but... Uh, Paimon can't believe you kept this a secret all this time! It's not like you think. I wasn't the one who tore out the pages. Look, just read it over first. Finished? Do you see now? The method used by the perpetrator to commit his crime wasn't by putting the white powder in the cold medicine. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> Where'd you conjure that answer up from? Try again. That's correct. The white powder was Shiroyama's invention. As a forensic doctor, he provided a special cold medicine for Takatsukasa Isamu. The autopsy report showed that this medicine contained a high volume of acidic fruit and vegetable extracts. Then, he tricked Ryuji into sending fish liver paste to Takatsukasa Isamu. When the two substances were taken together, a toxic dose of the substance formed in his body. This is the real modus operandi. Oh, that's awful! 
One was medicine, and the other was an expensive nutritional supplement. Both completely harmless. True, both are harmless on their own, but when combined, poof, that's it. It was not him who wanted to hide it, but the person pulling the strings behind him. Huh. You mean there was someone else pulling the strings? Aren't you curious where I found these pages from the research log? It was in Kujo Takayuki's secret warehouse. After I found the missing pages, I did some digging around and found out that Shiroyama had worked for Kujo Takayuki before joining the police station. The Kujo clan secretly provided Shiroyama with funds to study forensic science. I guess you could say that Kujo Takayuki's investment paid dividends in this case. Of course, I had only learned all of this after the Vision Hunt decree came to an end. Kujo Takayuki had lost his grip on power, and the Tenryo Commission was undergoing a general reshuffle. To avoid coming under suspicion, Madame Kujo Sara put me in charge of building a case against Kujo Takayuki. I found a huge stash of fish liver paste in a secret warehouse. Nothing hugely incriminating about that, of course, but I still took the trouble to open each and every package until finally... I had to concede that this really was just a huge stash of fish liver paste. But then, underneath the floor tiles where the fish liver paste was stacked, I found a secret compartment with this torn off research report lying inside. So it was him who wanted to frame Ryuji all along. What a nasty piece of work. Let's review the whole case from the top. First, Takatsukasa Isamu, for whatever reason, noticed Shiroyama's talent as a forensic doctor and asked him to develop a special poison on his behalf. But Shiroyama was already working for the Kujo clan, so he refused. Takatsukasa Isamu wasn't about to take no for an answer, and that's where things took a dark turn. He twisted Shiroyama's arm by making a veiled threat to harm his family. All Shiroyama could do was to secretly report everything to Kujo Takayuki. When Takayuki learned what was happening, he instructed Shiroyama to pretend to cooperate with Takatsukasa Isamu, then kill the latter with the white powder once it was fully developed. Meanwhile, Ryuji's only role in this case was to deliver the fish liver paste to Takatsukasa Isamu on Shiroyama's orders. Completely unaware of the fact that he was being used as a pawn, and that this was a key ingredient needed to create the poison. After the incident, Kujo Takayuki hoped to make Ryuji the fall guy, until the death sentence was stalled when it reached Madame Kujo Sara. In the meantime, Sango had begun her own investigation. Kujo Takayuki grew nervous that the truth would get out, so he threw Shiroyama to the wolves, hounding him to death and erasing all traces of contact between the two. And yet, he wanted to keep this secret formula, so he hid it. Greedy guy, that Takayuki. He must have wanted to have it on hand just in case he needed to employ it again in the future and make someone else disappear. We've got to report this to A. Whatever his current punishment is, it needs to be ten times worse! That would be practically impossible. One research log found in his warehouse doesn't prove anything. Even I can think of a hundred excuses. Besides, Ryuji directly contributed to Takatsukasa Isamu's death by delivering the fish liver paste to him. The fact that he was unaware of the true nature of the situation doesn't matter. He's still innocent, right? Isn't it just a coincidence? Uh, I don't really doesn't get how the law works. <laughs> Legally speaking, the judge would most likely rule that it was accidental. But in practice, Ryuji may still have to end up shouldering some responsibility. So basically, you've been hiding the truth all this time to protect Ryuji. Mental trauma doesn't heal as easily as physical wounds. My biggest worry is that Ryuji would struggle to cope if he knew the truth. He's like an innocent child. He freely gives his trust and his love to everyone that treats him well. 
That's why he thought of Takatsukasa Isamu as a father figure. I'm pretty sure that to this day, he has never paused to wonder whether Takatsukasa Isamu was actually a good person, or if Sango just hired him as a gopher, or why I left the detective agency. If he found out the facts about Takatsukasa Isamu, I'm afraid it would crush him. Uh, <laughs> well, as you can see, I'm a little less confident than people might think. To prevent Ryuji from getting hurt, I covered up the truth. But by doing so, have I held him back? Did I do the right thing? I couldn't turn to anyone for help, and everyone around me thinks I'm so smart that I should just be able to handle every case on my own. Even if I tried to discuss it with them, they'd just say, Don't be ridiculous, Mr. Hazo. No problem's too difficult for you. But you're different. Unlike them, you don't have that kind of prejudice towards me. You've traveled far and wide and have had all kinds of experiences. It must have taught you a lot. Most importantly, my intuition tells me that you're someone special. That I can trust you and that you can help me. Right? So, I'd like you to be the one to decide whether we should expose the truth or not. Oh, you don't need to tell me what you decide, and you certainly don't need to decide right now. Let's just say I'm leaving this teensy tiny matter up to you. All right, let's head back to the detective agency. You can mull it over on the way. Once you've made up your mind, just tell Ryuji and Sango your verdict. Hey, Traveler. Hey, Detective Hazo. You're back already, huh? <laughs> I bet you're tired. Well, I just bought some tonkatsu. Care to join me? There's plenty for everyone. We'd love to! Uh, but wouldn't you like to hear the results of our investigation first? No matter what you were able to find, it's all in the past and won't ever change. So I think we'd better chow down first. Besides, if Sango's not happy with the results, we might not have anything to eat later. Come on, Ryuji, pipe down. Let's hear the Traveler's conclusion first. Uh, okay then. Over to you, Hazel and Traveler. Don't worry, just tell us your findings. Everyone trusts you, as do I. Well, what do you know? I suspected that was the case. <sighs> Please rest in peace, Master Takatsukasa. No! Impossible! Traveler, are you sure you checked every last file? Carefully? <laughs> Ugh! No, you little... Ugh, shikanoing Hazo! You didn't pull any shenanigans on the Traveler, did you? Songo, no accusations without evidence, remember? The truth is out and the case is closed, Songo. Please don't send any more of your harassment letters to the Tenryo Commission. Well, I really owe it to you, Traveler. I'll be sure to properly thank you later. Until then, see ya. Hey! You're not going anywhere! Don't worry, just tell us your findings. Everyone trusts you, as do I. But how? How could this be? Huh. So, that's what really happened? Ryuji, I know it's hard to accept, but... Uh... 
Wait a minute. Sorry, I... I have quite the stomach ache. Sango, can I take the day off? Sure, of course. Take the week if you need it. Oh, Paimon hopes Ryuji will be okay. I didn't expect things to turn out like this. Just give him some time to himself. I think he'll eventually come to accept it. I'm still a little worried, though. What if he doesn't come to work tomorrow? Then we'll go to him. Don't you worry about that, Songo. You need some time to process all of this, too. You're here. Don't worry. Ryuji came earlier this morning. I guess he can handle a lot more than I had thought. I was honestly worried he'd suffer a breakdown. But as of today, it seems he'll be fine. He went over to Natsuke Nogen Crafts to buy something. Let's go find him then. Shall we? Before you go, Heizo, I, uh... I kind of understand now what you meant when you left. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm happy to hear you say that. All right, time to find Ryuji. Tsukasa Isumu was a very handsome man. Also, it's not uncle. Call me brother. But you look so old. Well, I'm still your brother. Huh? Uh, how come? Because he treated me like a son. Huh? Who are you guys? We're friends with your big brother Ryuji, and with your father too. my daddy's friends today. Um, can you tell me some stories about him? I really want to hear them. <laughs> sure. Why, I know enough stories about your old man that if I started talking now, you'd be all grown up before I finished them. Wow, that's amazing. Well, I don't want to grow up too soon then. Um, maybe when I'm a hundred. No, no, um, 200 years old. Um, no, 300 years old. Yep, I'm gonna wait until I'm 300 years old before I become a grown-up, so that I can make sure I finish all the stories first. Welcome to Netsuke no Gencrafts. We can make things other than sculptures as well. 